Oh, hello. Okay, so we were having some sound issues. All right, so we're having all kinds of issues. So can you guys hear us okay now? No audio. Uh, you're not on mute, though. I'm not on mute. Okay, it's working now. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, weird. Well, we didn't do anything. I guess it just <laughs> yeah. took time for the sound to come in. Cool. Well, that's good. You missed a couple of bad uncle jokes, so it's probably better. <laughs> So, uh, so yeah, welcome everybody. So I'm Miguel and uh, that's Chan Ma, Hello. our co-host. And uh, we're talking about the making of our short film, The Voice in the Hollow, which we are doing it li literally live. So uh, every week we're just showing the progress of where we're at. Um, some weeks we have a lot of stuff to show, some weeks we are completely defeated by some sort of problem. Um, so this week we're trying to find the, the correct lighting and um, Tran has been focusing on that, like the main set. And I've been focusing on just getting like this edit in place. So I'll show you guys, if you guys saw like the last episode, uh, right now I'm only like in story mode. So I'll show you like some of this stuff here. So this is still super rough. So um, what you'll see here, like the anteater is completely temporary. There's no chase in the beginning, but you'll, you'll, you'll get a, a feel of it. So the anteater animation is literally garbage. There's going to be all kinds of errors on the shoulders and uh, hands and whatever, but you'll, you'll kind of get an idea. <laughs> So this part is pretty much unchanged since last week. This is the part that we're completely redoing. So you can see these have no facial animation yet. Uh, the stuff in the beginning actually does. So all of this will be redone. So yeah, so a lot of that stuff you guys have already saw, have already seen uh, last week. Let me see. My sound seems like pretty low. So, um, but this stuff here is the stuff that we got this week, which I'm, I'm very happy with. This is the first time. So the hands are messed up. You can see the shoulders are messed up. The clothing is not simmed yet. But you can see this is the first time we're putting, like, the facial performance in there. It works pretty damn well. Uh, so, what we've been doing for all of that, so let me just get out of that for a second. So, for all the mocap, let me just pull this up. We're using this uh, program. We've talked about it a bunch already, so if you're jumping in for the first time, um, I'll just go through it real quickly. But we're using this program called MoCapX. And basically what it does is it allows you to use the Apple AR kit face stuff and just import it as a text file into Maya, and then it just does the animation uh, for you, right? So you have to record yourself doing the performance on your phone. 
And um, let me pull this up right now and show you. So pretty simple app. Well, I can't show it on my phone. I mean, that's stupid. I guess you could just see it there. But it, uh, you're just recording your face and whatever you see, whatever you're saying uh, gets transferred over to your character. So pretty awesome. Uh, you still have to do all the blend shapes for this. So it's, it relies on 52, I believe, blend shapes that you have to create. So we have that in there. And once you have that going, all you basically have to do is you just come over here, go to the clip reader, load up the file. So I'm literally just coming over here, recording myself talking, saying whatever, emailing it to myself. It's a tiny file because it's a text file and then just saving it, importing it. And then the only thing you do have to do is you have to play around with the, the clip frame offset, okay? So here, for example, is a scene a little bit later in the story. So you could see this, the girls are hunting. One of them kills the anteater. Uh, she's obviously the superior hunter of the two. This one's all exhausted. This one is like a, a snooty little stuck up uh, rat. So while she's going to find her spear, she finds it broken up in the bush somewhere. So she doesn't want to admit that it's uh, that it's lost or that it's broken. So she just says like, "Oh, I threw. I must have thrown it too hard, and it got lost." And the sister, of course, doesn't believe it. So she says like, "Sure." She's like mocking her again. There's no facial performance here. And then she hears the sound. She comes in here, and that's where we find this like evil cave uh which is the voice in the hollow right so all the sound here is temporary but the idea of this is it's like a original like ancient evil kind of like the orb in uh heavy metal uh the film and uh it calls her in uh right when she's like getting seduced by this thing she hears the trumpet which is her father and you can see this pulls her out of that trance of course so I don't have these next shots and I'm probably just going to frame them right now, but it's her seeing her sister and her father kind of leaving together with the, the kill that they caught or that she caught the anteater and, and uh, Koa, our main girl kind of being left behind. Baba. So this is like a shot that I put together literally seconds before, um, before the stream or minutes before the stream. So I'll, I'll go through this one right now. So I, I have the clip and I'm, I might re-record this because I feel there's not enough sadness in, in when she says Baba, which is uh, Papa in Swahili. Baba. I want there to be a little bit more uh, of a sadness that she's kind of being left behind there. So I might re-record it, but I'm getting the, so this was all done with motion capture, the body as well. So I wanted to time it, so give it a second to sit before she puts her head down and you, you could tell that she's kind of feeling uh, down about this whole thing. So come in here, I have a, I think this was like a 2000 frame clip. So let me just save this out and I'll just show you essentially my workflow for like, let's, let's do this shot here. second so okay so we'll just start with a, a completely new scene um let's just let this uh close up okay so we have nothing so i'll just open up the rig i might already have it here uh, no, let's just open it. So I'll go into my rig folder. Uh, here are all the characters. So I'll just find Koa. There she is. Give it a second. Thank you guys. Um, so many people saying that it's looking great. Thank you so much. Um, okay, so here we go. So we have the rig. 
Uh, there's a lot of things hidden here. So we have all our controllers. And all of this is uh, now set up with HIK for retargeting uh, motion capture. Okay. So I have this and we have tons of motion capture. So if I come over here, I probably should have opened that first, but I'll come over here to my mocap folder. So that was recorded in session one, voice in, this used to be called voice in the well, so we changed it. Mocap session one, the character's name, sequence one, this is when she hears the dad, and I believe it's number 18. So I'm gonna open up this FBX file I have here and you can see this is uh, it's been processed but not manually cleaned up data from XNs. okay and you can see it's a uh, quite a bit of frames so one of the things that I really wanted to do with this project is, is shoot it kind of like live action I say shoot it with like air quotes since it's obviously all digital but in terms of the mocap, I didn't want to break it down like shot by shot. I wanted to just capture the entire sequence and then find the stuff that I actually thought worked uh, and then cut around it. So you can see that's kind of it right there. She's standing there. She's bummed out. So I'm kind of finding the part that I like. So I'm like, okay, this one is good. So now I need to get this ready to be uh, retargetable. So I'll just go to create character definition, select the skeleton. I have my preset here, okay, right? I have this exclamation mark because it's got a uh, movement on it or a pose. But as soon as it goes to T pose, it's, it's good. And then I'll just save this out. So I'll just go file, save scene as, and I'll save it out as a Maya file. So there we go. Um, there it is, Koa number one. Your dad and I keep the exact same name as the raw mocap data that way it's easy for me to know what is what so I could track things back so number 18 okay I already did that so I'm not going to do that again but we'll just come back over here and open up um, the rig once more again I should have done this in this order <clears throat> just give it a second Okay, so now we have this. You can see she looks nice and cheery here. So I'm gonna go to my reference editor, reference, create reference, number 18. Just bring that right in there. And you can see the skeleton is over here. Okay, over here, you can see uh, the character one, source, we now have this new thing called new session and then the number 18. Put that in there and boom, it's just retargeted. So pretty straightforward. Now, the problem is if I were to bring in the set, so let's come over here and let's go to K. So I don't have the setup in Unreal at the moment because I've exported the geometry and it's, it seems to work fine for what I need. So here's my path. So I know that she's at the top of a hill here, and you could see the mocap does not line up at all. Okay, so I need to figure out how to get that up there, and it's actually very simple. All I have to do, select. Oh, first thing I have to do, come back over here, and I need to find the section that I want. So I'm like, okay, I want this to be from. She calls the dad. The dad doesn't come. We don't have that shot yet. We'll do that one next. So she comes over here. Let's see. Takes a step forward. So let's say 975. So I'm going to set my time. 975. Come over here. Head down. And I want to cut it before she starts to walk. So 1103. Let's do it right there. Okay, come over here, bake, 
baked custom rig. That's going to grab all that mocap data and it's going to bake it onto the controls of this rig. So now, the, the reason why I, it was important for me to set this timeline here, is you can see if I do this now, you can see that the keyframes are only set up wherever I had set that timeline, um, you know, length, so 975. So now I could actually just come over here to reference editor and just click that off. So I don't need that in my scene. I'll still keep it in there. It's not going to be loaded, but in case I'm ever like, crap, what file did I use for this? I'll know what it is. So there, there it is. Okay. And, but you can see again, she's nowhere near what we want her to be, which is not a problem. So I'll select my main uh, root control. I'll go to my animation layers. Basically, and all an animation layer is, is it's doing an additive motion on top of whatever is already there. So if I reposition the entire thing, it is not going to affect the main animation. It's just adding that uh, translation on top of everything, which is exactly what you want. And you have to tell it what objects you want to apply on the animation layer. So I'm going to select the main control or the root control, click over here. And you can see that now when I select this, it turns a little green dot there, letting me know that this object is now a part of that animation layer. So now I can just come over here, come over here, move this up to the top. And I'm going to put a keyframe. So I'm going to press S. I'm going to move the timeline. And I can see, OK, it's still not the correct position. So I need to rotate her like this and bring her forward like this. I'm not so worried about like getting the perfect foot placement at the moment. We'll, we'll deal with that later. So that looks uh, better. Move my timeline back press S again, and now you can see that she is in the correct position and the animation is there. If I mute this, she's back down there. If I turn that back up, she's back up on top. So I'm gonna set this, call this root underscore control and lock it. So I don't want to accidentally um, adjust this unless I, want to and then I'll have to unlock it okay so that's great so now let's create a camera so we'll go to create um, camera camera okay and we'll just go to panel look through selected and we'll come over here so I want to see what I'm actually going to see in my frame so camera settings resolution gate so what are we trying to convey with this shot she's being left behind Right, so let's come over here. She's being left behind by her father and her shitty sister. So let's just come over here. We'll add a keyframe here. And at the end of the sequence here, I'm gonna push the camera back. I'm leaving her behind as well. So I'm gonna make her feel like she's just completely alone. Push this, let's move this forward. And the camera movement has to have a reason, right? You don't just move the camera to, show, to say, like, look how awesome I'm animating my cameras. So there's, there's a reason there where we are pushing that emotion. Uh, I'm being left behind, okay? So Windows Animation Editors, Graph Editor. I'm going to come over here, and you can see that I have, like, a ramp on this. I can ease in and ease out. I don't want that. Okay, I'm just going to set all of these to be linear as if they're just being pulled on like a dolly. So there's no slowing down or ramping up. It's just a consistent uh, speed throughout the entire motion. Not every shot is needs that, but this one definitely. I don't want it to feel like the camera is starting or starting to slow down at the end. So now we have that. So you can see her feet are still kind of lifted there. 
So we could fix that real quick, unlock this, right click, select objects. Oh, I have my curves hidden. So let's go back over here. And I know that's Y, so we'll just bring that down to something like this. And that's good. Again, there's there's a little bit of interpenetration there, but at this moment, that those sort of perfect little things I'm not so worried about. I'm just worried about the overall story. Okay, so let's take a look at that. And you feel that she's sad, and that's the important thing. So now let's get uh, let's get the performance in there. So I'll open up uh, mocap X. I would show you what the interface looks like, but uh, if I did, you would, uh, I don't think you would see anything. Yeah, I don't think you would see it. So um, yeah, all you'll see is a camera and uh, a big deer head. So you would see that. <laughs> So you just see the light. But anyway, that's the interface that you can see. You would just press record here and whatever. It looks terrible there. So I just recommend you look at the interface. But what I'll do is I'm, I'm not going to act in front of you guys since I've already done it. But I would just do the performance. The funny thing is I originally thought about we had cast. Uh, we have uh, all our actresses that did the voices are in Tanzania. They're all African actresses. But we didn't. Uh, we weren't able to get them to come to Los Angeles to do the motion capture of the the body because we just couldn't afford it. We would have loved to. But uh, so we had a, a friend of ours act it out, and I was gonna bring her back in to do the facial stuff. And I kind of realized that I kind of know the dialogue better than anybody. So I just recorded all the face stuff myself. So when you look at all of this stuff here. Uh, all of this stuff is basically just me. So that's my, my Oscar winning performance. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, that last one, I actually even did the mo that's actually myself. I did the mocap for everything there because it was a shot that uh, I didn't originally plan to have, but I wanted a better transition from this to this. And if I cut between the two of them right now, let me, let me just show you, because it's actually kind of uh, cool to see. So if I grab that, let me just put it over here. And I got this one here. It's going to look a little bit weird because they're going to look like they're they're jumping between non-color and color, but you can see. Well, let me turn off the music. There was all kinds of problems there. Like it looks like she just left the frame, but now the sister was nowhere to be found. And of course, I could have reframed this. And I actually think we're throwing this shot away. But there was just, it felt like they, I needed more time in between there for her to get further away. And I also wanted to establish that the sister is kind of a nasty person. So I was like, I'm going to try to kill two birds with one stone. So I just recorded this one shot here. She could kill the anteater. Okay, so... Uh, Are there any good ways to start learning filmmaking with Unreal, like from the beginning? I mean, you're, you're watching it. We're literally making it from the beginning. So um, I don't know if you're going to get a place that goes through the very, very beginning the way we are. I mean, we're showing you all the stuff that's even boring. So 
it's not going to get more from the beginning than this. So, um, all right, so I have this now. You can see there's no facial performance at all. So when I'm doing the face stuff, I'll create another camera just to kind of zoom into her face. This. As you can see, there's nothing there. So I send myself the file. Just come over here to MoCap X, Clip Reader. Come over here. I go to my shots. So I just save the file out here. It's called Baba, MoCap, MoCap X. There it is bring it in there, you're not going to see the animation at all. Sometimes you may get lucky and you will, but here you can see her eyes close. But that's about it. So you might wonder why would that be happening? The reason is we're starting the shot at 975, a frame 975. And um, sequence obviously was not captured at frame 975. It starts at zero. So you have to offset it so that you get it to start in the right place. So you can see she's saying Baba right there. I want her to say it right around here before her head comes down. So let's see what direction that is. So let's do 945. Okay, so we're getting closer, so I want it right around there. So let's do 935. Pretty close, 930. Okay, let's do 925. And boom, perfect. So let's look at it through the camera. That's our camera one. Okay, so let's look at some of the other problems for a second. We come over here, let's go back over here. You can see that her arm is kind of looking funky here. So let's go to our NURBS curves. Let's select both of these upper arms. So I'm gonna lock that root control again, and I'm gonna create another layer, and I'll call this upper arms. Okay, come over here, rotate this down. Add a keyframe. Come over here, keyframe is S. Here, add a keyframe. You can see I'm only adding a single keyframe, and that keyframe is just offsetting the position. So here, you can see her arm is coming out a bit. So I just want to see that looks a little bit funky here. So let's bring this down. Because remember, it's added. It's being. It's doing an additive layer. You can see if I turn this on and off, what it's doing. So you, it, it works great here, but then over here, it might be coming out too far. So now you just kind of have to adjust it. Now, the great thing is it's still maintaining all the nice complexities of the motion capture. You're just offsetting it just enough to not have it interpenetrate in a weird way. And there we go. Okay. Let's look at the hands over here. You can see that's looking a little bit funky. So I'm gonna select the, the thumb in particular. I'm having a very hard time with the thumb on this project. It's always kind of messed up. So let's call this thumbs. Come over here and set this all to zero. Position it like that, it looks much better. Add a keyframe. in a little bit here. So 
So it's still maintaining the mocap data, but it's fixing the position of it. So let's grab this guy over here. You can see same thing. Some looks messed up. Select that, that, and that. Right click, add selected objects. Let's grab all of these guys. <coughs> and we'll position this in. We'll add a keyframe. So the hands are going to look much better. Probably go in there and give it another pass of just like nicer animation for, for the hands. Uh, let's turn off the NURBS curves. Let me save this just in case. So this is Baba. So Maya cleanup, and I'll just call this no mim demo. I wouldn't be surprised if this actually looks better than the, <laughs> the one I ended up doing because I'm putting in more time. Let's give it a second. So right now, I know that the position of this character is going to line up with Unreal. I could completely do live link, and I probably will uh, soon, but right now I'm only focused on the story component, so I don't care as long as the, the overall position is correct. I'm fine with it. So once I'm ready to see if it works, I'll just come over here, play blast, save to file. Let's go to my K, so again, the shots. And I'll just call this Gnome. And I'll just play Blast it. You can feel the sadness there, which is great. So our job as a filmmaker is to torture the people we love. So let's come over here. Uh, so this is the one I already did, but let's bring in a new one, the one we just did. So let's go to import. There it is. Bring it in here. I'm going to zoom in. So you can see right now, since I'm only dealing with the editing, uh, I might have to scale some of this stuff up, which is fine. I'll do that. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to find where her mouth starts to move. And it's going to be a little bit difficult because it's not rendered. So it looks a little bit low res. So I'm going to come over here and set this to full. Right there. Her mouth starts moving there. So what I'll do is I'll just cut it right there. I could put a marker there, but this is like a, a just a lazy man's marker. And if later I could just come over here and go to join through edits and it'll get rid of that cut. For now, it's just an easy way for me to see this. Okay. So now I could come over here and I open up the clips that I have of the actress. Baba. I'm going to hear the different versions. Ah. I could already tell after working on this enough that this is when she initially calls him, which is a shot we haven't done yet. Baba. Angalia. She wants him to see the cave. He ignores it. Baba. So I kind of like that one. Let's listen to the other one. Baba. That one sounds a little too upbeat. Let's come over here. Ba -ba. That one doesn't work at all. Ba -ba. That one kind of works. So let's try that one. So we'll come over here, put an endpoint. 
that was an out point, an in point here. And now I'm just going to drag the audio down here. And I'm pulling this down so I can see the waveforms here. Let's zoom in. And you can see that the audio is starting right there. So all I have to do is just align it with that cut that I did. Baba. Take a look. Baba. Right. Move it forward a tiny bit. Baba. Let's move it. Let's see what happens. Baba. It's too much. Baba. That looks good. So now going through edits. I don't need to have that split there anymore. I want these to be linked in case I accidentally move it. I'm like, oh crap, I have to redo the position. So I could select that, shift select this, right click and link them. So now if I move the audio clip by accident, the, the, the movie file goes with it. If I move the movie file, the sound clip goes with it. At any point, if I want to unlink it, just come over here and unlink it and you can keep adjusting it. They're now uh, connected in some way. So this is the one that we just did now. Baba. This is the one I had done before. Baba. So it was a different take altogether. Baba. So we are putting like a heavy grain on all this stuff. That's what you're, you guys may be seeing because I want this to look like it's shot on super 16 millimeter. Um, it doesn't make a lot of sense when you're looking at Play Blast, but I just have it there for, for the hell of it. So, but yeah, but that's uh, putting together uh, a shot from beginning to end. So, um, does anybody have any questions on, on that so far? If you guys uh, have a question, you should ask. That way we don't feel like we're talking into the void. So, um, let's see. Nope. Okay. So what else? So, okay, so now we need another shot. We need, so I have this one here. This is another one that I just did. So one thing that I like this next shot, I don't know what the hell I'm gonna do at all. So she's getting, she's in the trance. That's broken by the, by the father. She's pulled out of the trance. Camera moves much faster than pretty much any other shot in the entire thing. Jerks back because she's coming back into conscience. Right, and now what is she seeing? So I need to show the father and the sister so do I want to do a POV or do I want to show them already down there? I think I'm going to do a POV. So let's come back over here. It would be a shot like this. I, make, I may make her walk into frame like this, or if I don't have the animation for it, exact movement that I want, I could just do this trick where you just basically dolly back and then at the end of the shot, she's in it. So it kind of suggests that she walked up to that point um, in the meantime while the camera wasn't looking at her. So it would be something like that, her POV of her father and the sister. Now, I don't know if this is the right thing or if I should do it like this and have them both together and her in the distance feeling small and insignificant. But I know I want her to call him, so I, I may do this, then cut to her calling him, then cut to them walking away and then cut back to the one that we just had, which was her feeling uh, 
rejected. So, all right, so what are we going to do here? So let's try that first. So, one second, let's see if it is. okay, so let's just go to file. Um, which one do I have here? So I'm going to open, I'll import one of the rigs, I'll import the father. Actually, let me find the, the father shot first. So I'm going to save this. I actually have no idea what part of the sequence I'm going to use. Let's, let's find it. So I'll save all this. The father rig still has a couple of issues. But um, we'll go around that. So, okay. So we'll go to a new scene. Okay, we'll open up the dad rig. Let's bring in the geometry first. Probably should have just kept it from that one, but it's okay. So we have this. Uh, let's bring in the father. So let's go to, I'm going to reference it in. So let's just go to reference editor, file, create reference. Let's bring in um, the rig of the dad. So that's father. And I'm referencing this rig because I know that we're going to get an update on the rig. So if I don't reference it, if I do any work, I'd have to start from scratch again. So you can see the father's down here. Okay. So now let's go to file uh, uh, reference editor again, and we'll go to reference. Uh, file uh, import reference. Let's go look at our mocap. So all the father stuff I recorded this week. So I put it in a folder. So it's probably going to be this one here. So go to our HIK setup. Oh, there it is. So this is the one of him blowing the horn, so it might not be the right one. Yeah, it's not the right one. So let's uh, go back to our reference editor, come back over here, reference, replace reference. Let's do 17 MA. So something is acting weird here, <laughs> as you can see. Uh, so let's try a different one. Reference editor. I have a suspicion as to how to fix that, and I'll show you guys that in a minute. So let's go back over here. Um, so that was 17. Let's do 18. Okay, that's very weird. Okay, so when that happens, what do we do? That has to do with this here. For some reason, uh, the linking here has gotten a little bit weird. So what I'll do, um, let's just uh, create a new, let's just open up a new scene. I'm gonna just uh, not reference it. I wanna see if there's something broken in the reference or if there's actually something wrong with the file. So we'll go to uh, open again. See, it's a lot of troubleshooting. That's the thing when you're doing this live, it's like that, but this is, this is literally our life. It's this sort of stuff, 24 hours a day. So let's go to father. Yeah, 
It might be the reference. And let's just reference in the animation. Okay, so the arm is still messed up. Uh, <laughs> it's super weird. All right, so let's go to frame zero. Wow, how trippy. It's just completely bananas. What does it look like? It's doing it's ballet. Like What's weird <laughs> is that this here should be, uh, it should be going to a T pose and it's not. so. What we have to do, it seems like um, we may have to re-link some of this stuff. It's very odd. It does this once in a while. So all I'll do is this. I'm just select this guy here. Right click on this again. Assign selected. Because it seems like it's the arms that are getting messed up. Over here, right click, assign selected. Or lock. No, it's just, this happens. Uh, I'm not sure why it happens, but it happens once in a while, and it just wants to uh, wants to just have this stuff uh, adjusted. So let's just go to our um, joints real quick, and I'll just um, select this guy. My joints are locked, so let's come over here. Sign selected, come over here. Sign selected, come over here. Okay. I'm going to hope that this is it. Let's come back over here. And it's not looking good. So I may have to just go back in and check the actual mocap data. I mean, it looks like it's fine down here. So something might be, is the shoulder messed up? It might be the shoulder. So let's just try that. So let's go back to zero. Set this back to stance. Go back to our joints. Uh, let's go to the NURBS curves. So that guy's linked, this guy's linked. Uh, possibly, the, the, the thing is, all the mocap was recorded at the same time and the one with the horn is working perfectly. Uh, I've had this issue happen. Sometimes if this doesn't fix it, I just have to go back in to um, the mocap program and just re-export it, and then it just fixes it right away. It's a weird thing. So, okay, so let's just look at the joints. I'm just a little suspicious of the clavicle here, so let's just... Uh, Just do this. This happens so much that that's why I'm kind of calm about it. Um, if this doesn't happen, then I'll I'll pass it to. Tra yeah, it looks like he's still dancing. So all right. <laughs> so <laughs> so uh, let's just look at one more thing here. So now I'm gonna have to come in here and look at the actual mocap data. That means I'm a pro, or that means I've been, uh, yeah, I guess a pro means that you've suffered enough. But uh, as you can see, I'm still suffering.
Yeah, no, this is what it is. It's a, it's a Disney uh, dance number. <laughs> Where is that? There it is. Um, Joanne, you should answer some of these questions. Uh, uh, let's see, here's a question. I can't imagine retopologizing every scope for this project. So what instances do you manually retopo? Pretty much all of the time. Um, right. Well... For characters, we have to absolutely. Yeah. So, but even then, I, um, I took shortcuts with that too. Um, anything that we have to custom make has to have some kind of topology. If it's an environment, you can use um, like quad remesh, or you can try ZBrush um, Z remesh for environmental stuff. But characters have to be manually done that they don't have messed up topology. Like if you just let uh, Z remesh do it or uh, quad remesh, you can end up, end up with spirals. And even if you don't end up with spirals, it's just not really controlled. And you do have to control the character topology. Um, if you go back a couple of videos ago where we had Chris Bostjanic on, he was our facial guy. Like he was totally giving me crap for my, <laughs> my face topology. Um, and he's he's right. It's the stuff was just rushed. And there you go. It's fixed again. It's fixed. So very very weird. So all I had to do is um, well, I'll show you. I just brought. Well, I'm not even going to show you because it's, it's it's so boring. But all I did was import the, the original FBX into Maya, um, just as an FBX file. Select it. Uh, Let me just show you what the hell. So, just brought this in like this. This is the original FBX file. And I should have explained it as I went, but the worst thing is when you explain something that takes a while and then it doesn't work at the end and then you're like, oh, never mind that part, just do this part. So all I did was I brought in the original FBX. See, he's picking up the dead uh, anteater super proud of his uh, daughter right look at his proud stance there that's my great acting everybody so uh so anyway what i did i just came over here uh create character definition select any joint my default just make sure it's okay and then file save scene as and i just saved it as a maya file that's it nothing else and that's exactly what i had already done before but sometimes it just gets it just needs to be done twice i don't know why uh, yeah okay so now that we're back here i'm gonna do exactly the same thing i did before nothing has changed just that file was just acting weird so create reference uh number 18 there we go over here there's my animation so I don't want him to start picking up the anteater yet but I do like him walking up proudly so let's bring in the set well let me just find the frame like kind of a framing first so I'm gonna hide uh, my nerves curves for a moment I'm gonna hide let's go to um, Hide the joints for now. So we'll hide uh, joints, and I'll turn off uh, wireframe unshaded. And for now, let's just put on a camera setting resolution gate so I could start thinking in terms of shots. So I know that the anteater would probably be on the ground. I want to showcase the dad because this is the first time we're seeing him fully. So I don't want to drop him out too much. Now, it might work to do it like this, but again, this is going to kind of cut him off a little bit and have uh, Koa in the background here. 
I like that. So, um, yeah, awesome acting. So let me see. I don't want to deal with him actually picking up the anteater because I'm lazy. So I might just cut right before. So I think of framing like this, but I might rotate him. So I'm going to, I'm going to, let's bring in the, the, the set. Because now I'm just talking gibberish. Okay. So that's our set. So I know that happens around here. Okay, so the motion that I want is probably gonna be from there to that. Maybe 230. So let's set this to 230. Come over here, bake, bake to custom rig. Okay, great. Now I don't want to be carrying around all that stuff from the reference, so let's just hide it. Doesn't have to calculate it. Your outliner looks clean now. Still, it's still there if you need it. So if you decide, oh, I need an extra 10 frames, it's there. So, all right, so that's good. So now let's find our shot. Let's kind of frame it now. So let's go back to our NURBS curves. So we already know how to do this. Select this guy, animation. This is our control. Uh, master control, so now we could find a new position for him. So Koa is going to be over here. This scene here, we've already established where Allah is, the sister. She's over here. So exact placement, we'll probably have to figure that out in Unreal, but for now I'm gonna guesstimate that it's around here. And for now I'm gonna put a keyframe just as a, like an insurance, because sometimes if you don't set a keyframe, if you forget and you move the timeline It'll, he'll just snap right back to the original position. So I'll just put a keyframe in there for now. Let's uh, hide our NURBS curves so we can kind of see. So I definitely want to see the dad clearly. So kind of like that. What is going on with this mouth? Okay, it's just a clipping plane. So let's fix that. There's some weird stuff going on there. So let's just set that to like one. See, so just fix the stuff on the face. Okay, so let's take a look at the shot. So the father walks in. Oh my God, you killed the anteater. You're so awesome. Let's grab the, the dead anteater model and just throw it in position. I believe I put it... This one, uh, well, let's try it. Okay, so something just got messed up. father just blew up. 
And I think he blew up because I brought this guy in. Uh, crap. <laughs> All right, so that's not good. Yeah, I think this, this file has been giving me issues, this anteater file. So um, I got to resolve this. So you know what, while I, while I fix this, I'm going to pass this to Tran for a second because this is going to take a, it's going to take a moment. Uh, okay. okay. So let me share, share my screen. screen. Okay. So uh, let's see. So this week was very frustrating because, okay, so uh, Unreal official version came out. Um, and I think you have to. Well, it seemed like you just have to update, right? So you pretty much um, forced to update, and which is good, but there's a lot of there's always a lot of stuff problems whenever you update. So, blah. so basically, every time we've updated, uh, you know, you lose like a day at least trying to just fix stuff because um, pretty much all your scenes just look like crap. <laughs> like all the lighting is broken, um, all this stuff happens. So uh, the first thing I think I think is interesting, and I, I don't want to break my scene to do this, and it will take a very long time to load, uh, is I noticed here when I opened it after updating, uh, my lighting was broken, my materials were trash, and my scene looked really terrible. So what was happening... And I think this is interesting for anyone using this, and it just updated. So this could be a problem that's happening with um, anybody. So here, let's say I have this tree here, and you can see it's pretty high poly. Um, but if you come up here, I go into show, and I select nanite fallback, um, you can see there's really low mesh, right? Um, and this mesh is basically how my entire scene looked. So once I loaded everything up, um, everything was extremely low. Um, anything that was nanite looked like, um, I don't know, like really early CG with just low polygons. So uh, trying, you know, to figure out like one step at a time what was happening. Um, basically, um, as I was looking around, trying to troubleshoot it, I realized um, the problem is completely with nanite, right? So any mesh that wasn't nanite, like our characters are not nanite. They look totally fine. Uh, but most of my scene is nanite, and they all looked really low polygon. Now, if um, it took me a while to figure this out. I don't know what I was doing to figure it out. But I basically realized, OK, we're actually looking at the nanite fallback mesh. And then just trying to Google that, and then realizing basically the fallback mesh is just a mesh uh, when Nanite is not supported, right? So um, you could do a couple things to try to fix this. Like you can actually, if you look at these values here, where this says uh, fallback triangle percentage and fallback relative error, um, this value here, a value of one, is controls what controls the decimation of the mesh, right? So my original mesh looks like this. And when it imports in and converts it to Nanite, it creates this mesh here, um, and this value controls how low the polygons are. If you look over the numbers here, let's see if I can move my screen. Um, you have all this data here that tells you how many triangles that is. Um, that's, I realize that's probably not a good idea because uh, the fallback mesh is used for other things like for lighting and all that stuff. So this came down to just being a direct X problem. Right, so in the newer, if you go to project settings here, just type RHI, uh, you just have to set your default RHI to DirectX 12. So DirectX 11 is no longer supported. So anyone who's using DirectX 11 for Unreal 5, uh, you'll find everything will look like a fallback mesh, which is, you know, like this, right? So you have to change it back to 12. Um, so that took a little bit to figure out. And then the other problem that I had, um, actually, you know, I'll just show you a couple frames because I'm going to break this. <laughs> so let's just do this. Um, 
before I break it. So here's one frame, um, just a couple of frames. So I've been working on this environment, which is the environment where you've seen Miguel doing his previous um, work and just trying to make it better. Yeah, go back to that, that shot for a second. So that would be like where she's standing calling the dad, right? It, yeah. It's like up on top of that little... So this, this spot here is basically the entrance into um, the cave pit. So uh, and you can see it gets foggy um, for that reason. And just, you know, a few other angles there. So, um, all right, now that I showed you those things, uh, the other thing that I encounter, and I'm just typing to the console here, and this is what it looks like every single time it loads. Uh, can't get this to go. Okay, let's do that again. So every time I load, and this happens after I convert it to a direct X12, and you can see it in um, Miguel's scene, is I basically should have, not seeing it, let's force it again. The black, uh, yeah. I mean, I could just show it on. No, but it's really easy. It always shows up all the time. It doesn't, it won't work when there's a camera recording you. No, I think I just put the wrong code in. No. Oh, here it is. Okay. So if I move over my scene here, um, you can see I have all this massive splotchiness, right? So if you switch over to DirectX 12, um, Miguel and I don't have the same exact graphics card. We both update it. Um, I've noticed other people having these problems and we had this problem, you know, Miguel has this problem on his stuff. Um, these look more washed out because my scene is brighter. Uh, but you'll get all this like weird, like blotchiness. Um, this is basically a problem that you can fix. It has to do with ray tracing. So uh, ray tracing shadows. Right now, by I have I have ray tracing shadows for two side geometry enabled. Um, let me just type this into the chat. So that's what I have to type, um, or I actually turn it off. So one will turn it on, and then zero will turn it off. And you can see how that turns it off. Um, now the other thing that happens when you turn it off is you'll get little light leaks, right? So you can see here in this geometry, we're never gonna get, get close to this, but maybe I should just pull up a pen. I'll leave that up there for a little bit. Okay, let's write this. Um, so we have all these little light leaks. So whenever I have ray tracing on for both sides, it actually gets rid of that. Right, so if I enable it now by typing that command in the console and pressing one at the end or should go away. Okay, let's find another light leak here. <laughs> okay, let's do that again. Okay, this looks like a light leak for sure. Uh, this also happens on single side geometry. So a lot of the mega scan stuff is single side geometry, um, meaning they're not closed on all sides, right? So if you look at this side, like we can just see right through it. I've tried to block it with a cube. Um, And now if I try to disable it, okay, I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, okay, I did the wrong command. Sorry, guys. Tran is feeling down today. Yeah, I'm feeling very overwhelmed. I'm feeling frustrated. Okay, so 
What, whatever. Um, basically, I have more lights leaking through my single side geometry. So when I did have it enabled, it, um, it reduces it. And you can see just that light is pouring in weird cracks where you don't expect it to see. Um, and again, you know, it happens with the mega scan stuff that is single sided like this, right? So that, you know, um, as far as what I'd rather have, it's, I would rather deal with light leaks and not having black splotches everywhere. So that was one thing. The other thing that happens with all the mega scan materials, which I had to spend a ton of time fixing, um, is that all the norm maps disconnected. So like if I open up something like this here, um, you can see like these are no longer connected. So I've just been slowly reconnecting everything, which is really time consuming. Uh, and then the other thing that I've been doing that I noticed here after fixing these problems um, was that my a lot of my volumetric fog materials don't work anymore. So I have here, yeah, I have to reconnect everything. <laughs> so, uh, it's, yes, OMG, did you, yeah, well, I didn't really, I still have stuff disconnected, <laughs> but that's what, that's what happened. So I updated and all the, all the mega scan stuff is completely disconnected and just manually coming in and bringing that in. Um, I also have here in my scene some fog cubes. So let's look at some here. So basically, this is a cube of fog. If I turn them off, uh, you can see how that looks, right? We can see right through it. And I have like basically three, um, three cubes, right? Um, it's all just created by material. Um, as far as how I made this, I don't exactly know uh, because basically I did not have, you know, I just saw someone else make it. They didn't explain it. Um, I'll show you the graph, right? Basically your, your material you create, you want to set it to volume and blend mode additive. And uh, it's going to go into your extinction. So you also have an albedo, we can color it. This is the stuff I don't understand. Uh, and I just followed someone else doing it. And it would probably take me time to figure out what all this really means. So I can't really explain that. Um, up here, this is much more understandable. It's basically just a noise breakup, right? So if I look at my fog, let's just close this. And look at my material instances. Uh, I just have a purlin that I plugged in, that gives me a more natural effect here. Um, the one thing I found here that happened in, in this update, which is really frustrating, and I think this is messing up all my, my lighting. So let me just snap back here to this frame where you can see it pretty well. Is that basically with ray tracing on my lights now? It doesn't have the light beams working. Um, I have it working. You can see I have these rays, but I I basically made a, a cheat, and I I'm not sure if cheating is like a really um, good idea because once it updates again, it might just everything I did here might not work <laughs> anymore, so it might be completely broken. Uh, okay, so let me just turn off the, what my fog rays are doing. Okay, so I have a, a sunlight, right? Um, and the volume metric is off on it. So I can turn it back on here. At least I think I'm doing it. Okay. Okay, let's turn that back off. Okay, so here's what my light looks like, my main light. Um, when I have the volumetric scattering on, and this was fine before before I updated, right? Um, so it's at zero. Now if I turn it on, I have fog, but I don't have the light shafts anymore. So for whatever reason in this update, it doesn't work 
it doesn't give me light shafts. It gives me fog, but I really do like the light shafts. Um, I did realize here when I was looking at what's causing it, let's clear this out, it's, you know, under cast ray trace shadows, if I disable it, um, I will start to have fog again. Then just up the intensity, right? So that's what I want. Uh, but in order to make that work, I have to disable ray tracing, which is not a good thing because the whole reason why we're moving into Unreal is because you can ray trace real time, right? So that's not smart. So let me just enable it, ray tracing, and then let me just turn off the morimetric fog. What I did to work around, and again, I don't really recommend it because I have a feeling that it's going to update and it's going to be fixed <laughs> or something like that, um, is I duplicated the light, right? Uh, and I have this light here. And what it does is it has volumetric on. So this is the duplicate light. And it has this disabled. Now, um, what will happen if you do this is your scene will become brighter because you have two lights, right? So I have one light that is my primary sun. Let me just show you my viewport here, right? And then I have my light here that's giving me the fog contribution. So the sun has ray tracing enabled, okay? And the volumetric disabled. And my fog light has the volumetric on and it has the ray tracing um, disabled. Now if I turn it off, you can see I don't have the volumetric. Um, and if I turn it on, I now have it, but my lighting intensity is basically double. So what I did to try to work around this, and again, if you do this, just do it at your own discretion, is I just changed the channels, right? So um, I use lighting channels. I set my fog channel. So channel zero is default channel. My fog channel is set to one, and I kept my sun at channel zero. Now my environment, um, what I did is I selected my environment and I enabled both channels for both, right? That way they can all be affected um, by both lights. So that kind of got rid of it, that issue. But I don't, again, fully recommend this. Now if I turn off my sun, you can see with this light here, um, my only light I have on is the fog one. And so this is what it looks like. And you can see how it's contributing to my scene. It, it is affecting um, my translucent material still. So you can see that this is still being illuminated um, by this light, right? But for the most part, it's not contributing um, much diffuse at all anymore. That way, by switching a channel, uh, for whatever reason, this is how it's working. And again, I do think that this is going to break later again. Um, it all feels super band-aid to me, but it works for now. And then once it breaks again, I'll just have to fix it again <laughs> and figure out what's going on and why it's breaking. So this light will give me fog, fog contribution. And then this light will actually give me sun, sunlight contribution and it has proper ray trace shadows. So now I have one for um, fog, uh, volumetric fog, and I have one for just the sunlight. And so that's what I've been dealing with there. Let's see, what else? Um, Okay, so other things that I was messing around with, just get out of here, uh, is I have better clouds now, right? Um, this may not be the type of clouds that you want, but this is stylized, so they look more stylized. Um, as far as how I did this, this was pretty simple. So if you select your volumetric cloud, over here, um, on by default, it's pretty, pretty ugly looking, but you can actually use materials, right? If you go under your engine and your plugins, and you search all the way down to bi biometric content, sky, materials, um, there's all kinds of materials that you can actually plug in into here. So I basically just tried this out. Now to expose that, 
you have to make sure to turn on show plugin content. Otherwise, you won't actually see um, this folder right here, right? Once you have that turned on, you can find this under volumetric content, sky materials, and then just give them a shot. As far as what I did, then as I just dropped it in here, and I just messed with the materials here until I got what I wanted. Um, I don't think this is all, when you look at this, it's like a huge list. Basically, I just play with it until I got kind of these um, better looking clouds. The other thing you need to do is you have to go into your plugins, right? And under plugins, enable volumetrics so that you actually have, um, are able to access So, um, yeah, I think I'm, I think I might change a lot of stuff. I don't like how. Uh, well, yeah. no, sorry. I don't Go ahead, know. say it. No, I I think we like where how it looks when it's kind of more foresty, more jungly like this, but the out like just these kind of open. I mean, I would just show some of the shots and show why you don't think they work. I would just show it. Oh, it's going to take me. Have you figured out your problem? Yeah, it, it was. It was. Um, it was that stupid uh, anteater. When I bring it in, it blew everything up. <laughs> but um, yeah. Um, well, I have it loaded. OK, so. This is um, the previs or the sequence. Let me just change my camera here. So you guys saw these shots already, just on. Um, and let me just turn on my on letterbox my, on my play blast. Okay, so here's one shot. Uh, I'll just play it. It's going to have weird, some weird transitions. Okay, so I don't like this shot. Like, I don't like the lighting. And I don't like the lighting on this shot either. Right? This one's okay. As far as lighting hate this one. <laughs> uh, and I, I've been trying to light it, trying to figure out how to improve it. Um, I think we just have to reevaluate. This one's cool. So basically all the reverse shots kind of suck. Right, like this one's not very cool either. Um, okay, but that's it. So like, it's a little bit frustrating I think the thing is um, a couple of things. We, we have one, one universal lighting, and, and that is lighting everything, right? And um, so therefore, the lighting is not really art directed shot by shot. Um, we could re rotate the lights for every shot, but I think we should have something a little bit better to work with. Um, the other thing is that the background environment you come back here as it goes in the distance it's really getting pastel so i think um that's not really the look that we want to have and i am reading some of these concepts or it's not concepts these comments i'm just flubbing my words today uh, but you know thanks dosa kim you're saying super nice things makes me feel a little bit better <laughs> right you guys can, can tell that she sounds down today. Yeah, I am really frustrated with this. Um, the gobo. All right, I'll talk about that. So here's a question here. Um, how are you getting the gobo? Well, that's not actually as hard. But I think 
what I like a lot is, at least when we're working, is I really like, um, let me just break out of this, using light materials, right? So if you have a light, I think it's this one here. Yes. So if you look under here, um, light material function, you can just attach um, a material. As far as how you make that, let me just show you. Uh, let me put it in a folder that I can find again. Give me one second. Okay, so I have this folder of light functions. Now, when you want to make one, um, let's just load this one up here. Um, this is my instance of it, but I'll make a new one. So you create a new material. Uh, I'll just call this like demo. And then we'll make a instance of that just to have that right away. And let's double click on this one. What you want to do is you want to take your material here. And you can see by default material domain is surface opaque and default lit. Um, you want to change that in your master to just be a light function right here. Okay. So if I come over here, I'm going to set this to light function. And the only thing now becomes available is the emissive color, right? Um, you can basically put whatever you want in there. So I just have a perlin. As, as far as where I got the perlin, I just got it out of substance. So I just exported their perlin because they have really um, amazing procedure noises. But I, I also export a few more if I can dig, this up, dig that up. Let's just search this one here on our fog material. I have a pearl in here. So it's pretty simple. Like if I just went in here under this demo and I just dragged this demo master material, just drag this in, I could just connect this and this would already work as a global. And you don't have to do anything more complicated than this unless you want to do um, certain controls, right? Um, let's turn that off here. Now, this could be fine, but there's a couple of things I would like to do. So this is a tileable material, and I would like to be able to tile it and be able to control the tiles, right? So I have um, this more complicated setup here, but I think I should just go through it. Sorry, I'm not really prepped. Let's just go over here. Okay, now you can just create a texture coordinate. Like this, right? And you can just plug this in here. And let's just change this to a plane. Uh, if I have this texture coordinate, I have my U and V. So I can set this to two and I can set this to two. Um, and you can see it's tiled two times. Now the problem with just this texture coordinate is that we can't actually expose the parameter, right? So if I right click and I try to expose it, nothing happens. So I can only control it in the master. Um, it would be good if I can do this inside um, of the instance material. So what I did is I just created multiply and I just plug this in here, right? Um, now I have two values. I have my U and my V that I want to control, right? So it's not just one. So I need an append node. Plugged into B. And then I just created um, constants, uh, which is over here, right? Just a constant and then convert it into a parameter. So one will be U. And then one will be V. And then you just plug into here. Once I can convert these two parameters, uh, we'll have the extra control. Um, let's start it at one. We don't want to do it at zero. And I just plug this in here. And now if I save this, let me save that, give it a second. 
and I check out my material. which is under my light functions. Uh, you can see I now have these parameters, right? So now I can tile this to two, or I can warp it and I can stretch it. Um, the other thing that I wanted to have was just a little bit control to contrast this, right? Um, you can use multiply. I decided to use um, cheap contrast and I plug this in here. Now I need a, something to control this. So create another constant, convert this to a parameter, and we just call that contrast. And let's set the default at one. Plug it in here, and then plug this in here. Okay, so this contrast is a bit strong. Um, uh, we can set it to zero at no contrast. And now if I come over here, I now have this parameter that I can expose. And I just set that up. Um, and I can have a few of these depending on the, you know, the lighting. But that's how I got basically this look. Um, I think that works. Right? So now that she's walking through, uh, because there's light coming in through the side, you have that feeling like this kind of splotchiness as if she's walking through like the forest or something. Um, and use this for the fire in the other scene so it has a flickering effect. Um, it's still the same thing. It, all it is, again, is just material um, set it to light function and you can plug it into any any light that you want and then you'll have that kind of effect. Let's see. Let's look at the comments. Uh, yeah, I think the light leak is a good thing. Um, Bobo. Uh, we, there is a lot of light bouncing on the character's face. I don't think that's the problem. She doesn't look good yet because she doesn't have any expressions, so she just has a dead face. So that definitely affects it, but there's a lot of light actually bouncing back. Um, she does have a darker skin complexion, and I think, you know, it's kind of different when you're lighting a darker complexion versus like a lighter complexion. And so it's something that we have to have to figure out. So um, we might go for something more moody. I'm not, not sure, I have to really, you know, Miguel and I had to just figure that out. So together. <laughs> so yeah. So that's where that's at here. Uh, is there any other questions? So one, if you update, you can't use direct X 11. You have to do 12. If you change it 12, you're probably going to have messed up ray trace shadows. Um, so you can fix that. And as far as the light, again, light shafts. Um, I still think it's interesting here to be able to use different channels on our lighting, right? So that is something um, I can play around with a little bit more. Um, it's kind of like light linking, but for Unreal, it's not quite like light linking, but sort of. So yeah, uh, let's see, question. How is the character animation done? I think, Miguel, you can answer this. It's all mocap. Yeah. All, all the animation is motion capture. Oh, okay. that was wrong. What? Uh, that was the wrong question. I just pressed the wrong thing. How is the character? Yeah. Anyway, let me pass it back to you. OK. So uh, OK, so I just figured out, like, the for some reason that that anteater shot or the model when I brought it in, it just blew everything up. So, so let's see what we have here. So pretty much where we left off, I've just done a few things here. So I think this is kind of the angle I'm gonna go for. 
And you, you might have noticed that I turned my camera off because I, I recorded myself doing this, uh, this uh, expressions here and I look pretty stupid. <laughs> so I just, but uh, I literally just did it right now. So he looks really happy to, <laughs> see, <laughs> to see the kill. <laughs> the cloth will be all simulated and, and marvelous. So right now it's just all temporary. But uh, so yeah, let's play it. <laughs> Sorry. And he'll pick it up, throw it on his back, and off they go. So there's a few things here that are kind of cool. Um, yeah, thank you for, for tuning in, Dosa. So one of the things you'll notice is, okay, so this is my main control. So let me just name this. Lock it. Okay, so let's say you have an animation that looks like this and, and you, you've done some work on it and all of a sudden your supervisor says, um, you know, it looks cool, but I want the camera to be pushed out more, right? So you could try changing the focal length or whatever, or, but it might not be exactly what you want, but you've gotten the timing kind of perfect. So one of the things that is really cool, I mean, we've, I've been talking about animation layers a lot, is let's say I have these, these keys already put in place for this camera. I could just come over here and create another uh, animation layer. And let's just call this camera, for example. And you can see when I go view select camera, this green dot appears because when I created it, by pressing this button, it automatically added the selected objects. Yeah, the anteater, rest in peace. So the cool thing here is we have all this motion already in place, right? We like it, but we just want to push it back just a little bit or maybe push in a little bit. But we don't want to redo all of that animation because we kind of like it. It looks good. So by putting this on a layer, I could just come over here and zoom out just a little bit or, or as much as you want, really. Add a keyframe. And now you can see all the animation stays exactly the same, except I'm now further back. And the minute I want to commit to it, all I have to do, right click, select objects, press bake. It'll bake that into the original animation of the camera. But now I have to delete this because it, it, you can see it pushed it back even more because now it's doubling up. So now I come over here and delete this. And now the camera is exactly how I wanted it to, to, be, to be. So uh, I pushed it back too far there, but you could see pretty cool. So I don't actually want to keep that, um, so I'm going to undo that. But just definitely use the animation layers because they're pretty powerful. Uh, let's see, we have some spam here. The cameo we all needed. The, the anteater. Yeah. Oh, that, you mean me or the anteater? Kind of looks like an anteater, so maybe me. <laughs> so let me see. Uh, let me delete this layer. But yeah, so that's it. So now we have him coming in, and he'll be picking up the anteater, and um, he'll be taking him away. So that will be in here somewhere. So right after this, 
blows the horn. <laughs> Cutting really, it's really uh, having a hard time because I have a lot of uh, stuff open. But yeah, so that's it. So we'll continue this stuff for those that, that missed the stuff in the beginning. This is just like some of the, the killing of the anteater uh, does not have uh, any fancy animation on the anteater yet. Devin said he'll, he'll do the mocap. The anteater? Yeah. <laughs> Uh. So she'll have the spear there. And that's how the anteater dies. <laughs> so yeah, Devin, uh, as long as uh, Ricardo could stab you with a spear for to have true method acting, uh, you could you could be the mocap uh, anteater. So, uh, but yeah, that's it, guys, for today. So I hope you guys got something out of this. We probably, are, I'm probably going to keep this. This is probably going to be in the final movie, this this shot here. I just got to put Allah in here somewhere. Um, there was one question we missed. Uh, how are you doing the cloth on the characters? Oh, I answered that. Oh, you did? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, so we'll be back next week. Yeah, so we'll be back next week, guys. Thank you so much. Uh, it's good to see. Oh, look who's here, Davin. I know. Hey, Davin. Davin is the best. So, all right, guys. So um, thank you so much, and uh, we'll see you guys uh, next week. Does anybody have any questions, by the way, before we zone, before we, not zone, no, before we log off? <laughs> <laughs> I have comments. Yeah, they're saying, Tran, uh, uh, take your time to de-stress. De yes, Tran yes. is. Uh, I'm stressed. Yeah. Yeah. Well, she, it's, you know, just. She feels that her set looks terrible, so she's really bummed out, so. Yeah. Yeah. All right, yeah. guys. I'll talk to you. Well, we'll talk next week. Yeah. Right. Bye. Take care. See you guys. So hold on. Let me press this. Oh, yeah. And if you guys want to see, uh, follow any of our work, it is over here on Instagram. We post some stuff there as well. And that's it. We'll see you guys uh, later. <laughs>